we had reporting from over the weekend that a candidate for the Texas A&M offensive coordinator job is a man named Bobby Petrino. And it brought, you know, some, some thoughts here where I thought uh, there's two operative questions. Number one, who should Jimbo Fisher hire as offensive coordinator? And number two, who will Jimbo Fisher hire as offensive coordinator? Your suggestions and your predictions, and of course, all this coming once again from the news breaking that Bobby Petrino, currently the Missouri State head coach, is reportedly a candidate to get that job in College Station. I mean, I, I tweeted that uh, I guess Art Browse was unavailable to call plays. If, if you look at that staff that they're putting together there. It's a in, wild in staff, Station. boy. I mean, uh, so you got, you got DJ Durkin. You got, you got Steve Adazio. You got Jimbo. And now you may have Petrino. Uh, Culture-wise, kind of hard to see that all working out, right? Not necessarily guys you want to send your kids to play for. However... From a pure football standpoint, Bobby Petrino can coach. And I do wonder if Petrino has the kind of cachet and just the ultimate kind of, can I say F you to him yes. on, this, on this pod? All right. Mm -hmm. To tell Jimbo to shove it if Jimbo tries to jump in and call plays over top of him. Or, mm. you know, like, Bobby Petrino's He's made a ton of money. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, like, he may not, he may not take, it, take the lip from Jimbo if Jimbo tries to jump in there and call plays. Yeah. That's Gerald Dickey didn't coach a Heisman trophy winner. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I think with Petrino. It is like, as far as the off field stuff and what happened at Arkansas and all that kind of stuff, it's, you know, going to get headlines, but again, DJ Durkin's on the staff. So I feel like Bobby Petrino is, you know, not exactly a big deal, but I do agree with you, bud, in that, Jimbo needs to hire somebody. I don't have anybody specific in mind, but he needs to hire somebody that a, has ideas that are different than what Jimbo is doing that maybe, you know, you don't have to completely abandon your offense, but just get some new ideas in there. Some, just some fresh eyes, some fresh ideas, some new wrinkles and B who has the ability to not only you know tell you those ideas, but to actually have to have the kind of respect and credit that you can live to them. And maybe like you just said, the, uh, the chutzpah to tell, tell Jimbo to just, you know, F off if uh, this is my offense, this is what I do. And Bobby Petrino does have all that. Like, this is not a situation where Bobby Petrino needs this job. So if he's taking it, you would think that there was still some assurances that, like, all right, you're going to have some, you know, responsibility. You're going to have some control and some power over what the offense is doing. So it, it will get a lot of, you know, funny tweets and headlines about it if it happens, but I don't think it's a terrible hire. If it happens. Well, it also, you know, really brings out the, you know, the, the SEC like bubble and everything that only happens within the SEC is what matters mm -hmm. that his arrival at Texas A&M would take us all the way back to Arkansas as though he did not again, coach a Heisman trophy winning quarterback in his return to Louisville and have Louisville up in the top 10 in the rankings, have them going seven and one in conference play, losing on a tiebreaker by four yards to Clemson during the 2016 season. Now, did it collapse hilariously? Absolutely. Yes. But again, all of these things have happened, both the highs and the very, very lows, a Louisville team that was so bad that odds makers could not make the point spreads big enough they were failing to cover by like three touchdowns, not losing by three touchdowns, failing to cover the spread by three touchdowns during Bobby Petrino's last season at Louisville. But again, all of this has happened since Arkansas, but I feel like if he does get hired, we're immediately going to go back and look, and I, we did a, um, there was a, a web series on S on SB nation called Bomani and Jones starring Bomani Jones. Hayes Permar and I were the producers of that. We like helped them, you know, write them. We edited. We directed a bunch. Would you of say that you made Bomani Jones? No, he made me. <laughs> yeah, Wait, yeah, you yeah. produced that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's awesome. I was working yeah. there at the time. Yeah. So like the Bobby Petrino episode, like continuously gets like referenced and pointed out as people say it's like one of their favorites. The Bobby Petrino book of lies. Like I, I profited off that joke as much as you know anybody else. And so I, I get it. But I was like, come on, man. We've had a lot of Bobby Petrino happen since we, uh, since he got on the motorcycle. 
and toughed it out all the way to uh, to the hospital on his own to try and make sure that that wasn't going to get uncovered. The uh, I don't know if we can play this on the air, but if you guys want to laugh hard, there, this is like from like the like a very internet time. But the ballad of Bobby Petrino, I know I dropped this in our group chat, is a tremendous ninety second song, which I think is done. Who's the guy out of Memphis who makes these Chris Vernon songs? Yes, yeah, I. It sounds like a Chris Vernon song. I'm pretty sure it is. It is. Look it up on YouTube. It is. Uh, it is well done. <laughs> See, that's another thing with Bobby Petrino. If Jimbo hires him, just think of all these human meat shields he's surrounding himself with, so that way he doesn't get any of the heat when things go wrong. <laughs> that's brilliant. I said, what's what's what is Jimbo Fisher gonna do to avoid everything? Yeah. Just hire a bunch of fall guys. Exactly. You want to come to College Station, take a fat salary, and coach future NFL players who don't want to be here. Let's go. Yeah, I'm not. Um, the the staff is bananas, and Texas A&M fans. I guess you get you get excited about the talent that's coming in, and you hope that everybody. Uh, you know, every, everybody buys in because that's that is not a staff that encourages that is encouraging to me as someone who has to make project projections and predictions in terms of how things are going to go moving forward.